We have a special guest here, the Honorable Carl Levin, the United States Senator. We have our industry panel, hosted by David Ellis. We have Jim Overhaul, and then we have our demonstration for the morning session. One of the goals of this event is to promote industry and basically uh, provide opportunities for those engineers to provide jobs and innovation right here in Michigan. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you gotta, gotta love a little movie magic. It's a, it's a very bare bones, simple RC. I mean, isn't that what he always was? Yeah, <laughs> yeah he was. Yeah. <laughs> they tried. <laughs> but there's, I mean, we could put servos on the arms. We could, we could open the doors if we wanted to and have the arms come. We're not. You know, a year ago at the first Michigan Robotics Day at NCMS, and there was so much excitement that was created with robots running the halls. And in this new world of ours, robots are going to be must-have tools. Successfully demonstrated a system of 100 heterogeneous robots, communications and intelligence software, detect and track an intruder, and guard an item of interest. They're going to be must-have tools on the battlefield, in the operating room, on the farm, on the factory floor, and hopefully soon coming to a highway near you. What is this guy? This guy's a robot boat. Ah, I thought it was a water bot. Yeah. So like, what does he do? This guy right here, uh, he enters a competition hosted by AUVSI in the Office of Naval Research, and it's focused on uh, navigation and task completion. Oh, cool. So the first part of the competition involves navigating a buoy course. So there's buoys that are red, green, yellow. It has to navigate between the red and green buoys and has to avoid the yellow buoys. Mm. At the end of that, there's a bunch of challenge stations. These rotate out every year to keep us on our toes. So this year, the theme's casino theme. So we have to pick up a hockey puck um, on the shore. So we have to perform an amphibious landing. It's supposed to be a poker chip. But, uh, we have to uh, do a firefighting exercise. But this, in this case, uh, there are five aces, but one of them has an incorrect symbol. So we have to find that and shoot at it with a water can. The task is a uh, jackpot where there are two buttons buttons that are identical, but only one of them is the correct one, and we have to perform a mind-sweeping task uh, to see which one's the correct button. There's really no limits. It's a surface vehicle competition, so it's on the surface of the water. There's no okay. rules saying that you can't have, let's say, a quad rotor deploy off here. We've actually been joking with Mav about <laughs> borrowing uh, those guys. About how much do you think it costs to produce this spot? Man, um, this year we've burned through almost 20 grand. Wow. 30 grand. And a lot of that goes into motherboarding and sensor units. A lot of it goes into like the sensors. Uh, this Bakuyo down here is about five grand alone. Wow. Uh, this fiber optic gyro on top is another five grand. Awesome. And then everything from building the holes, getting transportation, even logistics is expensive. Don't underestimate Bong that. bots. People just have no idea how much bling bling really goes into it. So what do we have going on here? Are those speakers? Speakers? No, these are all cameras. Oh! We have an omnidirectional camera system up here. Nice. And the 3D laser right down here. Do we have to so we can read together in order to, get, in order to generate uh, a full 3D map. Ah, okay. And so does this kind of do a little bit of scouting too? We can map areas that you have um, uncharted yet? Basically, this is not autonomous. So okay. it's, all, it's all for developing the maps itself. So like we'll drive it along the whole North Campus and mm. build a bunch of maps of the, of the area. And the whole idea is to basically um, go several times through the North Campus in order to build up a uh, uh, time invariant map of the environment. So like things like uh, cars and people will be there. You know, it'll be things that are you know like the structural aspects of the building. And you guys got it set up on a Segway too. Awesome. And about how much does one of these bots cost to produce? Uh, all together with the sensors. The sensors are the yeah the sensors are the big part. So each one of these robots have a computer inside of them? Yeah. Are these QR codes or what are the purpose of that? They're what? They have a really similar purpose. Oh, okay. They basically have each robot's name. They can see each other and... Um, oh, so they can all identify with mm -hmm. each one, each other. And yeah. they're all autonomous. And so yeah. what do they do? Like, uh, 
So primarily they're mapping and exploration robots. Um, so you can see in this video there's some, some of us and some other teams um, mapping a fairgrounds in Australia. And they're looking for these red bins in this fairgrounds. And so they're navigating around building this map saying these are where these bins representing bombs are. Okay. And then when they see each other with the tags, they can exchange information, line up their maps, get everything to one coherent picture, and then we can use a centralized planner to send out defusing robots to find the bombs. Ah. My little lasers at them, as seen there. So, centralize them. Yeah, so they're, they're search and find robots. Yeah. Okay, right. So you can imagine them being used in that sort of military context or mm -hmm. in a search and rescue. Um, maybe you're just interested in making maps of areas. I know. Yeah. That's your thing. And they can okay, so I see. It actually will map it out almost like uh, like in the video game before you get to an area, yeah. unexplored area. <laughs> so then this thing is collecting 3D data, and so uh, oh, if you really want it, you can spend a long time crunching numbers and make a big 3D map of that area, too. We, we mostly produce 2D maps for our purposes. Okay. Now, like how much does it usually produce, cost to produce one of these maps? So we made these ones ourselves, which keeps costs down. Um, and they run maybe twelve thousand dollars in parts per um, bot. Per bot. Because I mean, obviously the camera. Uh, yeah, a large amount of that sensors and the laptop, and that's the majority. But lots of the other parts just kind of add up. Like the batteries are five hundred dollars. Well, that's a cool design. Yeah. And I'm wondering how, like, the drivetrain works. Like, does it do full three sixties, or does it have to kind of? You know, back up and reverse. It's a very simple drivetrain. Um, it allows skid steering, so it can do a 360. Okay. And they're not perfectly circular, which can cause some interesting planning issues, but they're pretty close to actually being kind of symmetric. So you can spin them in place pretty easily. Um, they can't turn around in doorways, but about anywhere else, mm, you can okay. just spin in place. Um, makes odometry hard. Would there ever be an idea to come up with the design to make it maybe do a 360? Maybe. Um, so there are like platforms that can do that. I, I think they work pretty well as they are. Um, so the only advantage that would give is that our odometry would get better, but we have some good inertial measurement units, so gyros and accelerometers that tell us our orientation. Right. And so it turns out that even though we get bad data from our wheels and we're spinning in place, uh, we have a pretty good idea of where we are, and that's really most of what we gain there. Okay. Uh, it means that on some surfaces we have a harder time than turning. Um, okay. I can imagine. That's what I always. I'm kind of come up with ideas on how to make him be able to drive over anything. So that is a problem with this. It can go over small curbs, but that's pretty limited. Um, bigger wheels would improve that. Um, the wheels are also pretty firm, which means that on slick surfaces, like say a wooden ramp, you might turn in place and start sliding down the ramp. Um, yeah. You don't have the traction. But the problem is, if you get more traction, then you can't turn around. So in cases like that, if we could do full 360 with maybe rubberier, rubberier wheels, uh, we'd be able to grip on services like that better. That's probably the only place where we'd have big games. Um, otherwise, though, I mean, this is a very simple drivetrain design, which is nice for us because most, we're not mechanical engineers for the most part. So <laughs> Programmers. Maintenance, maintenance becomes easier that way. Um, yeah. No, I like it. First thing that caught my attention when I saw them driving around looking at me. So wait, so this is in. Th so this one be this, this year's this bot. Is, this is actually in, uh, 2002. This is the world championship. Oh, uh, I was gonna say it looks so. like it earned some stripes. <laughs> it earned some of its its points. Wow, well that's pretty cool. So this is uh, a small model of the one that you guys have for this year. This is a small model of actually one of our competitors. We have our bot. We would yeah. one of the things you have to do at the end of this game is to get onto a ramp. Team 2604 Metal and Soul from Cape Tech, Michigan, which is about a half hour's drive away from Port Huron. Okay. And we will be first, first team to form in St. Clair County. I talked with my hair. Do you have any questions about our team? Well, okay, so uh, where is your bot? Do you have a picture of your bot? We are right there. 2604. The moving robot. So, what is its main goal or functionality? This Last year, right. our robot from this year is still in the bag. We are hopefully going to make it to the state competition. All right. So if you want to bag it, you're disqualified. Uh, so we have risen from the dead. I blow up from last year. All right. And I uh, having fun with it. Well, I'm glad to see it's still alive and working. And what was your um, job in the competition? For that competition, the game was. Got it. The game was to pick up those uh, inner tubes hanging from the other robot, and you'd want to hang them on pegs ranging from about knee height to 10 feet, and you would want to create the first symbol, the red triangle, the white circle, and the blue square, and those would give you bonus points.
Hey guys. That's cool. I like this. Very nice, crisp, clean design. This one looks like it's got spots. So let's get our history of the model team starting out did not necessarily have all of the extreme So basically what we have here is a quad rotor that we bought off the shelf. It's a cheap quad rotor, just a few hundred, a few hundred dollars. Um, what we're doing, you can see it has a forward looking camera and a downward looking camera. Um, what we use is we use these cameras to detect this landing target. It basically has a pattern on it. Um, it's called an April tag that some of the other groups are using as well. Uh, so we use the cameras to detect this target, um, and then we send commands. We basically stream the video to a laptop, process the video stream, process the sensor data that we get from it. Um, and what did you call this? This is a, well, it, the it looks like a QR tag. Right, and it's basically a QR tag. It's basically what it is. Um, but the, the technology was developed by a professor here. And he calls it April Pass. So that's what we call it. Did you patent it and everything get paid? Really? You can ask cool. the guys down, down basically, oh, these guys, the little oh, robots over there, they would know. Oh, yeah. Um, but, yeah, cool. so we detect this target with the cameras. Um, we get, from that, we're able to get the position information of the quad rotor and the target together. And then we can send the commands to do the autonomous landing. So um, Cool. So basically it can find its landing point. Right. If it can find that code, then it said, Right. So we have like a search algorithm. So it takes off and searches for the target. Once it locks on, then it's uh, all computer controlled from there. And uh, performs the landing maneuver. So we have some videos of our initial testing and things like that. So the whole idea here is to... So we use some, this is a debug software that we use uh, to kind of test it before. Right, so we can kind of record all of our data, play it back, and, able, and we're able to actually see it on the screen like this. Uh, I'm with uh, Perceptual Robotics Lab at the University of Michigan. Oh, yeah? Uh, yes, yeah, probably. I, love I, I, I wouldn't want to be there, there, there to clean that. No. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, okay. Um, that's a real interesting drive turn. I like it. Yeah, I was going to say, are more of these, are they, are they, Putting the kits out with these wheels, or is that like a custom? I'm about to catch a ball <laughs> from a robot. I, I want to see someone alley oop it. Here it comes. Talk about dodge balling robot. <laughs> My name's Adam. And what was your involvement with the ro uh, robotic building? I helped build it. I'm actually not the driver. Okay. I'm not the driver. Driver's not here. Ah, I was wondering, but you get a chance. You always wanted to. Yeah, I know. He's like, drive. give me those thick he joysticks. Got, he, he got the. He built part of it. He also um, was part of the drive team.
Annika was work she worked on uh, programming and our website design. Awesome. Robot slaves. Hello. Oh. Okay, we have this. You can wave. You can wave. What that's used for is that this year's competition, you had to, you could go over bridges, like oh, teeter totters, okay. and there were there were balls at the beginning of the game set up on the teeter totters, and so our our arm would go down and hit the bridge to bring the teeter totters, bring the balls down to us, nice. and then at the end of the game. Um, alliance robots, which were in red, or the blue alliance, what you could do is that if you brought the bridge down and you can get two robots on, you got 10 for additional points. But we, we actually made it at our last competition, we got three robots on the bridge, which is very, very hard to achieve. I was going to say, I mean, and that's 40 points. It looks really well put together and really planned, but really well thought out. Adam had a lot to do with the actual building of the, the um, metal park. He's wow. phenomenal when it comes to working on uh, the machinery. Who's got more torque? You gonna let him go out? You gonna let him treat you like that? Can I have some new carpet? Go again. I just lost my touch. Yeah, we can see the two. What just happened? We're gonna scratch steel, sir. Man, our breaker just blew. The main breaker just blew. It's ground up rubber. Yeah, the big black guy there. Uh oh. That's actually like a big thing. Yeah. I can tell. I can tell how content you are about it. Yes. Um, this is your team. Yes. So, which one's your bot? Do you mind giving me a little description of it? Sure. Oh. Okay. Well, we're playing basketball. Oh, okay. Yes, I'm getting described it a little bit. Okay. So we play on a basketball court size with four hoops on each end, um, and then down the middle is a barrier with three bridges. Okay. Um, so you play three robots against three robots. Um, you try to score as many as possible. The higher the hoop, the uh, more points you get. And then um, the end game challenge is you have to push down the bridge, which we do with this right here. Okay. When it's I've seen these there. pushing devices in the other parts that you met in action. Yeah. So you get onto the bridge and then um, you get points for balancing on the bridge with another robot. As well here, the entire module can rotate forward and back. So based on the distance that our camera tells us that we are away from the goal, we can rotate to the correct angle so that we get the right distance to aim. Nice. Is it, can you give me a kind of a, a breakdown? So we can see our map of the world here. Mm -hmm. So each of these blue lines sort of is an I as a representation of the laser scan that the robot sees. Like a road map. How are the different places in the world connected? So is this going to ultimately help with um, wheelchair technology or it could be applied for other things? It could be applied for pretty much anything where you want a robot in a structured environment to map his location. To map things and really to sort of interact with people. Because, <laughs> because what we've done or what we'll produce is a map that's based that we're trying to build maps in the same way people build maps. In that we, we sort of think about concepts mm -hmm. of like a little trial and error. Sections, right? You don't really <laughs> care about yep. you know if I want to go from point A to point B on a road, you don't really think about any of the stuff in between. All you right. do is care about staying in your lane, and then once you get to the next intersection... Well, who knows about that piece of roadkill as he's going to be right. sitting. But, you know, but that's just sort of <laughs> that local that information, right? Like, you, you sort of keep track of that as you go along, but you don't want to save that in your map, you know? Where? We're at the wall, uh -huh. and we're at a ground point. Okay. Yeah, so we're trying to build a local model like this. Instead of, it's not like, this mess, it's just more like... Where the actual structures are. Party rock! Yeah!